Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to talk about a couple of the cost optimization features we have in Turbo 360. And kind of the background of this is when I speak to customers, one of the biggest challenges that they have is they, they might see recommendations for cost savings, but like the lack of accountability and the, the challenge of the complexity of getting them done it just holds companies back from implementing these recommendations and it's difficult for people to see what have we done what should we do where are we in our plan so um we're doing quite a lot of work in turbo 360 at the minute around this um this area and i kind of just want to talk about some of the features that we have that i think can help customers who are you know kind of a bit um, a bit like par uh, paralysis by analysis around this so if we drop into Turbo 360 here, and I'm kind of on my team on the tree, so that that's the first sort of um, the first challenge people have is that often the cost optimizations are really at the, the kind of organisation level, and if you, unless you kind of follow that FinOps principle of let the team who build the app manage the app, manage the cost, and, and unless we sort of move down that democratisation path. It's very difficult to scale up getting these things done. So what I want to be able to do here is let this team on the tree take ownership of their optimizations. And then up um, at the top here in the optimization area, that's where they'll be doing some of their work with Turbo 360. So here we've got um, a list of some good things that I can potentially do in this team's um, application. So this is covering their dev test and production environment. And I've got some, some recommendations here. So there's different ways that you might want to choose to implement these recommendations. So this is where, you know, if you've got an existing workflow that works for your company, we can try and drop into that workflow. And if you haven't got the workflow, we can try and give you some suggestions of ways of doing things that would be effective for you. So let's go through some of the options. So the first option I've got is this little button here, which will basically let me click that link and it'll just jump me straight out to the Azure portal so I can go straight into the resource and, and have a look at uh, what I can do with it. So that, that's a really simple one. Um, nothing too fancy about that, but... The next ones I can do is I can click on this resource here and it'll give me some of the information about what this resource has been doing. So we have a right size and recommendation to resize this from plan A to plan B and there'll be an associated saving with that. So for me, um, if this recommendation is really good, then in Turbo 360, if you give the application permission, then the user in this team, if they also have permission to be able to make changes, they can click the Apply Now button. We go to the Management API on Azure behind the scenes and we'll execute that change straight away. So that's option one. Some customers really love that to just get through these changes and, and get things done. Now, sometimes you might have a scenario where you know, we can't make this change straight away. So a good example would be if it's a VM, then I might need to make the change out of hours because the resize would have a um, like a restart of the VM. So what I could do is I could choose that, um, that machine and I could do a scheduled action. And then up at the top up here, I can specify when I want this change to be made. So one of the examples might be I'll... So, right, let's go and make this change next weekend in the morning. So I could maybe go down to, I don't know, say 10 o'clock in the morning. I can have I can actually put multiple changes to be queued up as part of this job, put some comments, get a notification on them and stuff like that. And I could save that job to go and make those changes at the weekend or in the evening. So that's a nice little option as well. Now, the next option would be... Um, Sometimes you might want to ignore the resource. So there's a couple of good scenarios here. So firstly, we've just gone live with a new application. So we need to let it run in the real world to see how things look. So maybe we say ignore it for three months. So I can go to the ignore option here. And I can say either ignore until a certain date or ignore always. So maybe I've got, a, I've got an SLA I have to hit. So I need the resource to be over provisioned. 
to meet that SLA, so I might leap ignore it always. So that's one of the other options. And then the last option that we can do that's quite cool is having that um, resource ticked, I can also trigger a notification. Now I, I quite like this and I find this is very popular with some of our MSP customers. And um, what they might do, so the common scenarios here would be put an email address in for your help desk system and you can trigger a notification that sends an email to your help desk system with the, the details of the ticket that you want, or the, the resource change you want to make. That then logs a ticket that you can allocate to one of your um, support people to go make that change. And it just it then gets tracked just like any other support ticket that you as an MSP would deal with. Um, the other options here, you know, we could do something like a ServiceNow ticket because we've got a connector for that. Um, you can do Teams messages and other things. And I actually quite like this other one here as well where I've got a, um, a DevOps connector where I could send a work item to be created in Azure DevOps and I can allocate that to one of my developers so they could maybe go and modify a Terraform or a Bicep script and do a deployment and then that change would reflect in the environment. Table 360 would know you've triggered a notification for it and then it would just see the change and, and update our system to let um, to let you see that change had been made and it, it may, you know, if, if the recommended change a couple of weeks later, the resource usage has changed again. You might get a recommendation to make another change and you can just follow the existing workflow. So that's really the idea is to give you a number of options here for how you can take cost recommendations, drop them into the workflow for how you would execute them in the way that works for your company. So we can try and get these changes made and then realize the potential cost savings that you would do. Now, in future versions of the product, so what we're doing behind the scenes when you make these changes, we're recording these, and then we will be adding report and showing you some of the changes that you've made. So you'll be able to kind of demonstrate your management team um, via a nice report and an upcoming release to show what changes you've been doing. Um, I hope this video is really useful. If you'd like to try this feature out, please reach out to our team and we can show you that.